All right, so we got John Lacombe from the West Lot Pirates on with us, the Northwestern Podcast. You can check them out on iTunes, uh, Facebook, Twitter, it, we're, it, everywhere. West Lot Pirates are everywhere. So go check them out. Um, <laughs> we're going to talk about Urban Meyer today. So we'll give everybody a summary of what has happened to get us to this point. Uh, former Ohio State coach Zach Smith was arrested for criminal trespass on his ex-wife's property just before Big Ten Media Days. That led Brett McMurphy, who is a former ESPN reporter but is currently working for himself. I think next week he starts a stadium, but he's just freelance right now. Uh, he starts digging around. He finds that Smith had a domestic assault arrest in 2009 for pushing his pregnant wife up against a wall uh, when he was a grad assistant under Meyer at Florida. McMurphy also found out that Smith had another domestic assault arrest and a restraining order put on him in 2015 by the same woman, Courtney Smith, his, uh, his now ex-wife. When the story broke... Urban confirmed that he knew about the 09 story and that he and his wife had counseled the, quote, young couple. But when asked about 2015, he said he didn't know anything about it. And he took a shot at, at Brett McMurphy with this. He said, I got a text late last night that something happened in 2015. There was nothing. I don't know who creates a story like that. Now, that pissed off Courtney Smith, who then talked to McMurphy and provided tons of text messages, etc., which led to Meyer being put on paid administrative leave. All right, John, let me get you to jump in here. Um, if Urban could have avoided all of this, right? Well, of course, but I think the problem is I think Urban Meyer is a fan of your podcast and he's a competitive guy. <laughs> and uh, I think Urban was listening after a while and he was like, wait a minute, winning cures everything? You guys got to hold my beer. You guys got to hold my beer. I like it. So, no, so... I think yeah I mean kind of like you said right it's it's the it's it's not just that he said it it's the way that he said it which is which puts that whole you know this apology that he's put up online uh, or you know whatever you want to call it half apology apology that he's put up online um, I think it's what kind of draws that into question right because it's not like he just stood up there and was like I don't really know what you're talking about or I'm not at liberty to discuss that or whatever. He kind of, like you said, he took a shot at McMurphy. He was like, I don't know who makes up a story like that. I mean, he's really dismissive. And then someone, I don't know if it was McMurphy or who, um, you know, a couple hours later kind of doubled down on it. And it's like, you sure this is where you're going to go on all this? And Meyer was kind of like, that's that's where I am. You know, that's, that's what I'm saying. So um, I think it he certainly dug himself a little bit of a mess it does him no favors that zach smith uh went on ESPN. well hold on hold on let's let's go let me let me run through the rest of this oh, sure. <laughs> and then I mean, and then we'll jump in these guys so are geniuses. so ohio state assigns a six-person investigative committee to research the situation uh now in my opinion it should have been done by an independent third party but ohio state assigns these people it's Current Ohio State Board of Trustees members Alex Fisher, Janet Porter, and Alex Shoemate. They are joined by former Ohio uh, House Speaker Joanne Davidson, former Acting U.S. Deputy Attorney General Craig Morford, and Carter Stewart, who is a former U.S. Attorney for the Southern District of Ohio, all of which understand exactly how important football is to the economic fabric of the state of Ohio. Now, it, go ahead. I was going to say, keep in mind when you look at like something like former Ohio House Speaker Joanne Davidson, this whole like you can't go into anything on, with Ohio politics and not have it crisscross with Ohio State athletics. I exactly. Mean, keep in mind right now you've got Jim Jordan, who's a congressman from the state of Ohio, who's got an eye on running for a Speaker of the House of the United States House of Representatives, is fighting off allegations uh, that he turned a blind eye to sexual assault when he was the assistant wrestling coach at Ohio State. So it's like, I mean, we'll get into this in a little bit, but none of this stuff is happening in a vacuum, and that's not good for Urban Meyer. No, not not at all. So we'll we'll fast forward a touch to Friday afternoon. Meyer releases a statement, like you were talking about, uh, basically saying he was ill-prepared to answer those questions at Big Ten Media Day and that he did know about the 2015 instance and that he reported it to the proper channels, which... To me, sounds like he's throwing his AD, Gene Smith, under the bus. Uh, but along with that, Zach Smith goes on 105.7 The Zone in Columbus, Ohio. He tells the show host that he never abused Courtney. Nothing illegal or violent ever happened between them. Immediately after that, McMurphy tweets out a screenshot of a text from Zach to Courtney where he's apologizing for choking her on two separate occasions. Now, in my opinion, 
uh, Meyer thought, I think, uh, he thought putting out that statement was going to help calm the waters, but it just kind of engulfed everything all over again. He, Him saying that he knew the whole time, but that he reported it, like that immediately led the already pissed off people to start in on the fact that he let, uh, he let a person with two different domestic assault arrests stay on his staff for years. Like I, It doesn't matter if charges are brought in that case because people understand the circumstances that a wife and mother, etc., can be in in that situation. So let's dig in here. I want thoughts on on what Meyer should have done if there was a way for him to get out of, of all of this mess, what Ohio State should have done with their committee, what Ohio State should do with Meyer, why did Meyer keep the kid, etc. Like, let's just dig into everything. It, John, you can start first. I'm going to let Chris talk. I've got everything that I said out of the way. Y'all just dig in on this dude. Let's go. Yeah, and I'm sure we're all big Urban Meyer fans. So oh, sure. no, no <laughs> doubt. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah. Uh, no. Um, so, I mean, first of all, I mean, this was kind of said, like you said, he went on Ohio Sports Talk Radio, Zach Smith, and then he goes on ESPN. I mean, it's, it does Meyer no favors that he, he goes on, he's, you know, half defending Meyer, like, oh, I think he could have done this, could have done this, which is the worst thing for Meyer ever, because Zach Smith comes across in these interviews almost like like an actor playing an abusive husband, like on TV, where you're almost <laughs> like, that's a little, you're a little too on the nose, you need to dial it down a little bit. <laughs> just just a touch. To, <laughs> we need something more subtle here. So I'm like, he's so, I mean, obviously it's a bad situation, but I mean, I, you know, and, and obviously we're all digging in and we're trying to, we're speculating a little bit, trying to figure all this stuff well, out, let, of course. Let, us, me, us, let us, me, let me ask you this. Why would Zach Smith come out and say anything? Like he's not hired, right? Like he doesn't work for anybody. Why well, even I, come out? I, I mean, I think part of it is, I think in his, I mean, listening to him on the ESPN thing, I think in his mind, he's digging himself out of a hole. Whereas to everyone else, he's just digging himself deeper and deeper in. I think in his mind, he's got something where it's like, I mean, he must have said husband and wife issue. I don't know how many times on, <laughs> on ESPN. <laughs> this is just between me and my husband. It, it's like, yeah, the 1950s called. Like, you need to, you know. The, <laughs> I mean, it's just like between me and my wife. It's like ridiculous. So, but I think, you know, looking, reading between the lines here, I think there is something where it's like, Urban Meyer knows that that his assistant coach and his wife are having all of these problems, and you know, and his wife, I'm sure. I mean, I you know, I don't know if Urban Meyer is ever even going to bother making a form of denial, but obviously, his wife is coming to him, being like, "I've been talking to Courtney Smith, and this is a disaster. What are you going to do about this, etc." And that classic, that classic situation, right, where it's like whether it's i mean coach college football or any job it's a situation where like oh well we don't want to we don't want to take this guy's job away because that just hurts anybody well you know what there are clear channels to keep you from having to make that kind of decision it's called title nine and everyone's bound to it that works at a college campus and you don't have to make those decisions urban meyer you just kick it up to the proper channels now like you said he's saying that he did that i don't know um I will say this, and, and again, you guys can speak to his time at Florida better than me, better than anybody. But what I can tell you about his time in the Big Ten is that, I mean, you, I mean, all you have to do is, like, like you said, I mean, I, I think to most of the people on the outside, this Ohio State panel is looking like, you know, a lot of, a lot of members of the home team are yes, on this panel. Yes, right? indeed. Um, but I think within Ohio State, the peop the powers that be are trying to outsource it as best they can because the thing is I'll say this um, the days of adm an administration thinking that they can back a head coach in the Big Ten and not have it blow up in their face have been long over I mean we're I mean we're well removed from Graham Spanier and Tim Curley both going oh. to jail over yeah. the Penn State thing right and then you've got Michigan State where they cleaned house top to bottom. Uh, because of the whole Larry Nasser thing, um, you've got, and, and I mean, so those are the two big ones, right? But well, I mean, and it, now people can look at Michigan State and say, well, they didn't get Izzo and they didn't get D'Antonio, so like, sure. And I mean, those guys were peripherally involved. Exactly, guess, it was best. very but, minimal. But what you've got right now, right, is is you've got presidents and athlete presidents and athletic directors. The writing is on the wall, right? It's like your faith in this guy will not save you. Don't think that because, like, if the public starts to believe you could have done something too and you didn't do it, you're in big trouble. I mean, I've got, 
I, I mean, I get Big Ten country. I can just go through. I mean, you've got uh, Ohio State, right? They fire. I, I was just laughing with somebody over this. You know, they fired Jim Tressel for Tattoo Gate, which Correct. now looks like the softest thing ever. Now I'm like, gosh, I wish we could go back to when guys were getting free tattoos. Um, <laughs> that seems like that seems like the good old days. Um, and then you've got there at the AD, who was the AD when Tressel was fired, Gordon Gee. That guy could never keep his mouth shut. He finally basically gets pushed out the door in 2013. Um, like I said, you've got the same thing going on with this guy, with Jim Jordan. So you've got a current sitting Ohio congressman where he's being pulled into a separate potential sexual assault scandal at Ohio State. You've got Mike Thomas, the AD at Illinois. He got canned in 2015 because of the whole Tim Beckman mess. Oh, yeah. You've got, um, you've got Rutgers. You've got their second to last AD. Uh, got fired because of everything that went on with the basketball coach Mike Rice, and then their most second most recent AD Julie Herman got fired for everything that went on with their football coach Kyle Flood. You've got Tracy Clay's got dumped. I mean Minnesota was an example, right? Of, oh yeah. Uh, you've got Tracy Clay's getting canned at Minnesota after going because, nine and four. Right after <laughs> right exactly after. I mean well, and he had you know along with Jerry Kill had built that program out of nothing. Yeah, but. By that point, the writing was starting to come on the wall in the conference. And the minute he said some things he shouldn't have said in the wake of their own sexual assault scandal, Minnesota was just like and, – and I think even by then, Minnesota's president and AD were like, the axes are coming for us next. Well, it's, the, not so, a situation, it's not a situation, again, where everyone's like, well, you had to back the coach. It's like, no. If, if see, the that's the thing. The, that goes above you, you're all gone. The coach is in a in – a, so Tracy Clays was in a no-win situation. Because if you don't back your players, like right. you lose the locker room, right? right? So, but if as soon as he backs his players, and it has to do with sexual assault, then he has lost his administration. So, like he, well, there was no way for him to win. And then, well, and the other unfortunate thing for him is because the players took a stand, he took a hard stand, and then when within hours, the EEOC report came out that basically was just like a hundred pages of detailing everything other than the names yeah. of exactly what happened. And then that was all gone. But I mean, you've got, you've got two schools, right? Just between Michigan state and Penn state within the last 10 years where it's been a total house cleaning, right? I mean, you know, in the case of Penn state firing was the least of it, right? Yeah. People but go to jail, got, but you've got the, you've got the, 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 the president, the AD at Ohio State right now. The days of them being like, we've got to back Urban Meyer because he is the biggest thing since sliced bread at Ohio State, those days are gone. They will cut him loose in a second if they think it's going to creep all the way up to their level. Um, well, you and, talked about Gordon Gee, and, and remember, he came from Vanderbilt. So where he was before, he had never seen real football money, right? He had never seen what like what effect a big time football program can have on a school. So he worshiped Jim Tressel. Like he thought that was the biggest thing going. A at least with Gene Smith, like he understands uh, at least I would think that look, you got to get out ahead of this thing and I I would think that he and everybody else up there would understand if you cut Urban Meyer loose, you can go get another good head coach. Like Ohio right. State has never fallen off for very long. At all, they. Uh, it, I mean, it went from from Woody to Jim Tressel to uh, to Urban Meyer, basically. Like you had the one year of Luke Fickle in there, but like, right. That's it. That, like they they no, always no, get right. good ones. Now they're always going to get a good coach. Now, with that said, I mean, I don't want to sell Urban Meyer short. I mean, this is. I mean, like we. So we previewed. We're we're in the middle of all of our Big Ten previews for the West Lot Pirates right now. <laughs> Did we you have to redo all. Ohio State's? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Well, we put, yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And that's the thing. They're lucky for, lucky for them. We got that out of, they, they were, they're in our non-con. I mean, our, our no plays this year. Okay. We're up to, you know, 14 teams now. So we, we previewed, previewed them early because we don't play them and, uh, Northwestern. And yeah. so uh, we, you know, I, I do the defense every year and, uh, I mean, this is as close to SEC football as the big Ten's ever going to get. Cause I mean, Ohio state may have as many as five, as four, five-star cornerbacks not starting this year. Whew. So even for Ohio State, Urban's taken them to a place relative to recruiting that very few teams in the Big Ten have been in recent history. And so, I mean, it's, it's they will, they'll feel it. And I mean, again, we've been going through the, you know, the whole Big Ten West and you've got 
Penn State, Michigan State, especially Michigan, everyone's got big question marks. And Ohio State has question marks at quarterback, but that team's absolutely stacked everywhere else. And it was kind of like they were the beacon of stability in the conference. And now it's kind of like, eh, I don't think so. Um, and, of course, the real funny thing is I've mentioned how many schools, how many names, how many ridiculous situations, and somehow Jim Harbaugh's name has stayed out of all of it. <laughs> I, have, I have no idea how that's even Listen possible. now. Hold on, hold on. Jim is crazy, <laughs> but he's not like – he's not he's not this way. I mean, he's just nuts, and I'm okay oh. with nuts. I like oh. quirky, okay? I like weird, but well, I Jim- – but I can't handle Urban, and I've hated him before he got to Florida, when he got to Florida, his whole time here. Um, I just don't – I don't understand where this guy gets off. And then for some reason, he's a really handsome dude. He looks great on the sidelines. He is unbelievable in front of a camera. And because of that, America has given him a pass. This guy is a grade A piece of trash, and I've been screaming it to anybody who will listen – for years there is no doubt in my mind that these coaches know what these players are getting into now they don't stalk them they don't follow them around they don't know their every move but he had not a guy that got in a little trouble which every university has well hold on you talked about you're saying players but like this was an assistant coach no we're having let me get there okay we're talking about this man had a hard core gang member that committed oh. multiple <laughs> murders while at Florida on his team. Now, did he know about the murders? Sweet Lord, I hope not. But I don't know that his integrity is strong enough to where if he did, but Aaron Hernandez is that good of a player and wins a national championship with them, that he wouldn't sweep that under the rug or call into effect local police departments to kind of look in the other direction and leave his guy alone. This guy is 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 a is a whole different level piece of trash, and somehow he has gotten a pass from everybody, all the way through our country, and I don't understand it. And I always felt like, is there something wrong with me? Am I judging him too harshly because I despise him? I don't think he has any character at all. I don't think he has any integrity at all. Is he good at coaching football? Sure. Outside of coaching football, the guy probably could barely be a PE teacher. I mean, look at the moves he's making to defend himself. These guys are idiots. They're just well, really good at football. You look at the way he talks about the 2009 incident, right? Like, it just like it's like someone should just sit him down and be like, "This is 2018, like young couple." He's yeah. like, "Oh, this isn't like some young lovers quarrel." The guys had something like what, like nine reports or something like that. Like, yeah, it's, like, it's up there. Like the th- Right, and it's like the guy, and he's like, oh, it was like a young couple, so we got him counseling. It's like, this isn't like a marriage spat. It's like, this is an abusive relationship. And, right, and I think, and and right, of course, the whole thing he's trying to dance around now with this apology is, is if you knew about 2015, okay, maybe you filed the proper channels, but first of all, like we said, You've got an AD, Gene Smith, who will cut bait in a second if he thinks you're trying to sell him out. And they'll go straight to the emails. They're going to want to say, is there an email record of this? Show us the email where you told Gene Smith about this in 2015. Because if you didn't and that email's not there, you're in compliance. And there's no way Gene Smith's ever going to be like, yeah, Urban, talk to me about this. Even if that did happen. If there's not a paper trail, uh, it ends with you. And the second thing is, even if he did that, everyone's immediately going to be like, if you knew about 20, 2009 and you knew about 2015, what the heck was this guy doing coaching your team for another three years? Well, that's and, the question, right? And, like, let me, let me get both of y'all to answer that. Tell me, uh, other than him being Earl Bruce's grandson, why would Meyer keep this kid on staff? Like, he, There's 200 wide receivers coaches in America that could do his job. I don't, I don't know the answer to that, Kerry. I just I, I, I think yeah. Urban thinks he's bigger than the he doesn't have to answer to anybody. These guys feel like they're gods because we make them gods. And I just I just think like this guy again, I said it before, but I think, you know, it became clear from all those Courtney Smith text messages, right? That this is one big family, right? All these wives are talking together, which means all the wives are talking to the husbands, which means it's all going around in circles. And I think that means that Urban was probably sitting there in 2015 or something. I mean, it could be. I mean, 
I'm giving him a little bit more of the benefit of the doubt than Chris is. But again, it might just be like Urban's just like, I flat don't care. The guy can coach. But like maybe Urban was sitting there being like, oh, well, golly gee, I just don't know what to do. Um, obviously, this is a really bad situation, but I don't want to hurt Courtney Smith by firing him. But again, like I said, that's why all of these Title IX and everything else is in place, so that someone like a football coach isn't making these decisions. Correct. You're supposed to kick it up the ladder, and then someone whose job it is to make these decisions just says, yeah, you got to fire this guy. And then it's, you're like, sorry. Title I IX stuff. Hand, can you? It, let, me, let me get on this Title IX stuff. Title IX is the most confusing crap. Oh, like, universities yeah. should not be in the business of trying to, to dig into these things. They should not be investigating this. It should be police and whatnot, Local right? police department. Well, and so, hang on. So this is another route that I take, and, and I don't know this, and, and, and I don't know the police officers there, but I know small-town cops, and I know schools that have immense power and influence, Okay. This guy's a football coach. If she does call the police, how much of this stuff gets kind of swept under the rug and, hey, why don't you go sleep at your sister's tonight, and he cools down, and then tomorrow y'all talk and everything's okay, and that's kind of how the police handle it. I'm not saying that, but would it surprise me if that happened? No, not at all, which is why him wearing that uniform, him standing on that sideline saying, I am an employee of the Ohio State football team, carries so much weight he cannot have that luxury to protect himself and while you keep him employed he's always going to have that luxury of saying hey don't mess with me i work for ohio state football well and again too like i mean if you go back to the penn state thing right and how it all came down on paterno because paterno will say hey i kicked it up the ladder and i went on but a lot of people would have said in that situation right a lot of people said even even back then they'd be like kicked it up the ladder how come you didn't call the cops yep. how come you didn't find out about it run and dial the police and then you know again it's literally the job of the police to do this so you got a little bit right i mean if you call the cops and the cops don't do anything you know i'm inclined to give the coaching staff a little bit of a pass to be like look it's documented you called the police and if the police didn't do it i mean you then you're going to be arresting some cops but if but urban like, calls the cops the cops are going to do anything urban tells them anything you, I mean, it's it's possible. I mean, he's but again, it's he should just I mean, and again, should call the cops, wash his hands a bit. And again, it's again, it's 2018. And it's like <laughs> when separate from everything he does right here, did he follow the proper channels, a bunch of things? You're going to have a huge section of the pop of the, of the populace that's just going to be like, I don't want to care about I don't care about whether or not you told Gene Smith. How come the minute you didn't find out one of your employees was beating his wife, you didn't just call the cops and then, like, deal with this situation? So, I don't know. I mean, again, I think for a split second, Urban thought he did himself a, a, a solid when he released that statement. And then between the Zach Smith interviews and everything else, that has evaporated really quickly. So, I think the real question is this, this quote-unquote independent panel, what is their timetable and uh, and how are they going to try to work about this? Because I would imagine behind closed doors, the first thing I would do is I'd go to Gene Smith and I'd be like, let's see the emails. Let's see the emails where he told you this. Is it your problem or is it his problem? And uh, I don't I mean, I kind of at this point, I'm like, if he did and then it's in Gene Smith's lap, you know, it's it's kind of like someone's going to get fired. And I, I kind of have a hard time seeing that it's Gene Smith unless these emails pop up. My, well, see, my problem is this. So I, I, I'm actually friends with a lot of my connections in Cleveland. I know a ton of Ohio State people. And there is a mass following right now that is like getting together, supporting Urban in this. And that's something that really bothers me. I can, I can tell you with all honesty, Les Miles, so many LSU fans thought he had to go because he couldn't win ball games that he should have won consistently and the offense wasn't what it was, and it was all football-related. And I was the one guy saying, I want my coach. He cares more about these guys being good men than he does about being great football players, and that matters to me. It is some, Now, I'm in the minority of fanatic football fans, but that matters to me. I cannot imagine, and it helps that I hate Ohio State, and it helps that I hate Urban Meyer, but I cannot imagine defending a football coach 
with something that I find of a line of principle, something that I find that this is not negotiable, that this is not something that I can just overlook or overpass by and say, well, once season starts, I won't worry about this anymore. I'm not saying that I'm better than all of those other people, but I have no idea how any of them are able to line up in the streets, gather together and say, we stand with Urban. He's our guy. We don't want him gone. There has to be something else that happened. And it's all strictly because they know the college football is so competitive. When they lose Urban, the time it takes to go from Urban to the next coach could be a national championship season slip through their fingers. And that disgusts me. Yeah, it's, I, I, I mean, I completely agree. And I think it's funny, like you said, with Meyer and this image and everything. I mean, I think Tebow's part of it, right? I think. How does this, he get credit for Tebow being one of the greatest people on the planet? But that's what I mean. Like, right, it gets, it gets pulled in, like this set of values. And keep in mind, you know, I mean, that's, he's, He's Tebow's not the best quarterback during the uh, the best Florida quarterback of the Urban Meyer era. That would be Cam Newton, who was there yeah. for about two seconds. That's right. Until he stole some laptops. <laughs> he got kicked he got out. Kicked out. And that one, and kind of as as you pointed out earlier, that one's kind of far down the list in terms of things. Oh yeah. Guys who were Florida. Uh, well, I mean, you Meyer you had Chris there. Rainey like uh, telling a girl like time to die, be like all right. all kind of different stuff out there. I mean, Florida was a train wreck. Right. And, and, you know, I think and, and again, I don't I don't want to wade into conspiracy theories and all that. But I mean, I was when Meyer suddenly resigned, I was kind of like, you know, I was looking to see is there more there there kind of thing. And maybe it wasn't. It may, may have just been his health reasons. He wanted the year off and everything like that. He was he was scared of Saban. That's all that was. Come on, man. Oh my God. <laughs> now, look what you did. Yeah, see. <laughs> we got we got Alabama in the show. See, it took it took like two hours for us to get it, but it, yeah, we got it Alabama happened. in the show. It, we had Muhammad Massaquai on earlier. I wanted to ask him if he still had nightmares about the uh, about the blackout game down at Georgia. <laughs> anyway, oh, goodness. Uh, all right, so so let's wrap this all up in a nice little bow. Uh, what could Meyer have done to prevent this, other than like firing him back in 2015 when he found out about it, and and what happens now? Like, what, what are we going to find out this week? I, I mean, I don't know what we're going to find out new, but I've got to think, like I said, it's chain of command, right? And again, this doesn't happen in a vacuum. Plenty of ADs and, and not a small amount of university presidents have been fired in the Big Ten behind some of this stuff. And um, they're going to go to the emails, and if, you know, and G, someone like Gene Smith's only going to be too happy to be like, I don't have the emails. This doesn't fall in my lap. I don't care what Urban said in his statement. None of this arrived at me. So it's either on paper or it's not on paper. But I feel like if it's on paper, Gene Smith's going to be the one who's going to be in the line of fire. And if it's not on paper, I just don't see how Urban gets out of this. I think for a second he thought he'd gotten himself some wiggle room, but but I don't know. I mean, it's stunning because a week ago this wasn't on anybody's radar and just bang. It's come right up. Now, and, do you, um, you don't think there's any way on earth if we get into a he said, she said, and Urban digs his heels in and says, I told him, and he says, I didn't. You know everybody in the country and definitely everybody in Ohio State is going to believe Urban. I guess, but, I mean, again, uh, if you've got an AD and a school president that think they're going to get fired, they will cut bait. Like I said, I mean, this is it, it's a different world than it was 10 years ago. These guys do not ride or die for their college football coaches the way that they used to. Not if they think it's going to come all the way up to their job. So, I, again, I you know, we'll see. But I, I've got to think this independent panel or whatever, they're looking at some emails right now and they're seeing what's there. And I think that's going to be the next shoe to drop one way or the other. I like it. It's 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 really sad. I mean, we, we we laugh and we joke because Urban and these guys just bumble this situation so badly, but it's not funny. This chick was terrorized her you know entire marriage for a long oh, time by sure. this psychopath, and and it was allowed to happen. Well, but none of this comes out if he doesn't get arrested for criminal trespass. It wasn't even the domestic assault stuff that popped up. Like no. that stuff got brought out because of the trespass. Right. Like, had none of that stuff, like, had he not gone on her property like he was told not to do, like, none of this would have happened. And, and Urban calling, you know, in essence, uh, you know, the, the writer that come out and, 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 and reports all this, 
pretty much fabrication. Oh, he just made this whole story up. What makes people do that? Yeah, if you if you don't call out Brett McMurphy, yeah. you're probably all right. Yeah, you're probably all right. But you literally just called this guy a liar and said he made all this up, and now look what happens. Well, Unbelievable. It's, you know, it's, it's funny. On our pod, we've talked about it, too, where, um, you know, when Me Too blew up over the past two years, right, we were like, if there's any place this is going to get to, it's going to be college sports. Oh, yeah. Especially college football. Oh, yeah. And uh, because these guys have just been so clearly poor at, at handling everything. And you've got, you know, and again, it's like 15 years ago, 10 years ago, whatever. It was a heck of a lot of different environment for a college football coach to be like, I just didn't know what my assistant coach was doing. And I heard one thing and I heard another and I just wasn't sure who to believe. So I just kind of had to keep on doing my job. And now now today, like none of that flies. No, you don't get that now. Pass. Now it's like, oh, that's if that's if that's what you're going to say, then we'll just fire you because that's not like none of that's going to none of that plays anymore. And I think, again, it's. I doubt this is the first or the last time this kind of thing is going to come up, but uh, it's there. It's it's arriving at college football, and uh, I, I'm sure Meyer's not going to be the first or the last guy. How do you think it affects their season? Give me a win total. Oh boy, I mean, I I think you know their ceiling's 14, so uh, that's where that's where it was. I mean, they've got as clear of a path. We were talking about this. I mean, you've got Michigan. I mean, first of all, I mean, well, I get the this, ceiling would be 15, wouldn't it? Fifteen, right? Yeah. I mean the amount and the amount of uh, yeah, fifteen. It's yeah, that's all. All the rules, man. The, I know it's ridiculous. The, uh, I mean the amount of good defenses in this conference is crazy. But you've got, um, I mean, you know, we could go down a whole, a whole other corrupt coach coach road if we start talking about Shea Patterson. But Shea Patterson's at Michigan now. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. And you know, it, it, it's like if he's the answer for them, maybe that unlocks their potential. Michigan State. They had an amazing run defense, good overall defense, and good quarterback play last year. The play calling was kind of a little bit up in the air. Um, and then, so you've got, and you got Wisconsin, right? Like the talent level's not there, but the defense is unbelievable, et cetera, et cetera. But you keep, pre- we keep previewing all these teams, right? And it just keeps coming back to Ohio State. It's Ohio State that everyone else has to knock off. It's like, oh, well, if everything comes together for Team X and they get this kind of quarterback play and this kind of defensive play, maybe they can go at Ohio State. Or if Penn State's defense makes, you know, an even bigger leap this year and they're able to make up for Saquon Barkley and Trace McSorley is is off the charts, maybe they make a run at Ohio State. But it's Ohio State by a good margin still, even with a new quarterback coming in. I mean, they are just heads and tails above everyone else from a talent and recruiting standpoint. So, but now the question is, you know, what does this do to all that? I mean, it could be that at least in the short term, um, you know, they're still able to work with, with everything that they've got. But I do think, you know, and even Urban seems to realize this, the whole idea of a distraction and everything. I mean, they don't want him around the program right now. They know that all the pieces are pretty well in place, at least for this season. They want to let things run. So, I don't know. I will say, you know, you've got Harbaugh, call him crazy, call him whatever. He couldn't wait to jump on this. Um, oh, you know, yeah. He's, tw- he's tweeting out uh, whatever uh, – those those who first practice to deceive oh what a tangled web we weave like he had that <laughs> it's like he had that ready to go on twitter oh yeah the minute the urban meyer stuff came down and it's kind of like oh, but right, urban Jeff, is taking on. shots at him and right. and and so you know you you had to expect it you had to expect it right so. right exactly so i mean that's that ohio state michigan thing and that goes back to everything you're saying about before right i mean there's this whole element above all of this right where everyone's like well, so does Michigan have a chance now? Yeah. How does this affect Ohio State, Michigan? So, yeah, if you're looking for classy, look somewhere else. Cause, uh, <laughs> you're you're in the Big Ten West, and it's Ohio State versus Michigan. Uh, good gracious! All right, he thank is you John. For on. Yeah, thank you for jumping yeah, on. He is John Lacombe from the Westlot Pirates. You can follow them on Twitter at Westlot Pirates. They're on Facebook. They're on uh, what is it? WestlotPirates.com. Is that the website? That's it. WestlotPirates.com. And and. Uh, once, yeah, if you want, if you want to check us out, if you're obviously, I know you're your SEC country, but uh, if any of y'all are curious about what's going on in the Big Ten, uh, we're in the middle of all of our Big Ten previews right now. So you want to look at least on the football field, what's going on with the Buckeyes or what's going on with the Wolverines or anybody else? It's all up there right now. So check it out. Absolutely wonderful. All right, buddy, we're going to get you back on during the season. All right. All right. Thanks a lot. All right. We'll talk soon.